good evening. So good to see you in church tonight. And uh, aren't you grateful for air conditioning? <laughs> My goodness. I'm telling you what. Uh, of course, the kids are at youth camp. And uh, I think the kids are probably doing okay. I think some of the parents are struggling. <laughs> I know Patty said she's, they're staying in a little cabin. And uh, she said it, it's just got a real small air conditioner. And she said it does okay from about 3 o'clock in the morning to about noon or 1 o'clock. And then from 3 to 3 the next morning is terrible. So, <laughs> so anyway, we need to pray for them. But, but I'm grateful that we have a nice cool place and, and trusting the Lord to help us tonight. So good to have friends from uh, the Beardens from Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Is that right? And uh, he went to GBS just, I came the, I think came the year I, for, after I left and knew my brother and sister and so forth. But uh, so glad to have y'all. Welcome. And uh, good to see all of you here. Good to see Maggie Ray back there. Maggie, so glad to have you. Welcome, and uh, good to see all of you. Why don't we just bow our heads and invite God's presence tonight. Lord, we thank you that we're in the house of the Lord tonight with your people. And you've promised that when we gather in your name that you will be here, your spirit will be here. And we thank you that we can expect tonight to, to know that God is present. And by his spirit, you will speak to us and draw us up close to you and help us in a journey toward heaven. So we ask you to do that tonight. And we'll give you thanks and praise for all that you do for us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get our songbooks. Anthony's coming to lead us. And uh, with having about 40, I'm not sure exactly how many it is, at youth camp, there's some empty spots. So you're going to have to sing... Rodney and Brother Witt and Mike and Pat, you're going to have to fill in that spot over there. not many people there, so just sing extra loud. All right, so Anthony, come and lead us. Well, I was going to say we are a few but mighty, so if you'll sing that way, we'll be all right. <clears throat> Let's start with number 121 in our chorus book. 121. <clears throat> Oh, more love. 
That is so true, isn't it? We, no matter what we can do for him, Amen. he's done so much for us. Amen. Let's turn to number 20. 20 in your course book.
Well, that songwriter caught a, a glimpse of something that songwriters often do, and that is that we have an awful lot to thank God for, that God has given us purpose and meaning and joy in, in, in this life, but one of these days, it carries right on into the next world. He's going to bid us welcome in eternity, <laughs> and I thank God for that, that hope. Praise the Lord. Living for God isn't just for this world. It's worth it in this world, but it leads to heaven in the end, and that's important. Praise the Lord. Amen. Elizabeth, we're so glad you're here tonight. I failed to mention that a while ago. So gl glad to have Elizabeth here with us. Well, we want to pray together, and uh, Brother Rick Tallman, would you lead us in prayer here in just a moment as we pray? There are several requests that we want to remember. Of course, at the top of our list would be our church kids and families that are at youth camp this week. Uh, Sherilyn said they had a real good altar service last night in the service, and we're very grateful for that. And Let's pray that God would touch Andy as he preaches and give him special anointing, even tonight, that God would touch him and give him help that's beyond himself, and then touch all of the young people as well as our kids. And You know, there's a, there's a, a concerted effort. Uh, uns, unsaved, unchristian people know what they need to do to get their viewpoint to become dominant in this world, and that is they're trying to groom our kids public school and on television and the movies and all kinds of ways they want our kids they want their minds while they're palatable you know and moldable and aren't mature in judgment they want to to get things into their minds and that's why I want us to pray for our young people because there are things that God wants to get into their hearts and minds at at this age and so Let's pray especially for our kids at youth camp. And uh, then we want to pray as well for Randy's youth camp is next week. And uh, I texted him earlier and sent him a picture of what my phone was saying about the weather report for next week. And I said, did you order this? <laughs> he said, no, sir. <laughs> uh, two days when I was looking at it, it was saying 99 degrees next week for two days. I think they may have backed a little off of that. But. But uh, pray for that youth camp as well. And then uh, we want to continue to remember uh, Brother Redmond and ask God to touch he and his wife and Byron and his brother and uh, the whole family as he battles cancer. And, and uh, I, I just want God to be so very close and real. And uh, we, we are perfectly in order to ask God to touch Brother Redmond. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. All right. Yes. Yes. Let's do remember tomorrow as this uh, has this uh, bone scan, and just pray that God would be very close. Sister Albertson continues to need our prayers. She has had good news from her surgery last week, but. She also has some tests, I don't know, CAT scans or something coming up, so we want to remember her as well and ask the Lord to touch her. Then uh, we want to remember the Sankeys. The Sankeys got home late this afternoon, and they, Brother Sankey said, we are just so wore out. We, we uh, are not going to try to come tonight, but let's pray for Brother and Sister Sankey as we pray tonight. And... Uh, uh, Sister O'Donnell said her brother is better. He was fell and was in the hospital on Sunday, and he is improved, but want to continue to remember Daniel Robbins. And then Sister Winkler called me just before church, and uh, they kind of face a crisis with the children, and uh, so she asked for special prayer. So would you help pray for the Winklers and the kids? Uh, God knows, and God is able, so let's pray for them. Maybe you have requests that you would like to mention tonight. Yes, Sister Albertson.
Yes, yes. Now this is the Ewald that lost her father? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, I, I was thinking that was correct. So let's remember the Ewald family. Uh, the mother, Pat, father passed away in an accident and uh, mother had kidney removed. So let's remember her as she recovers. And Brittany attended here through the school year. She was at uh, GBS, so let's remember that family. All right, any other special request? Yes, Marvin? Remember, uh, Charlie, yes. Yes. Yes, I had heard that, and I apologize for not remembering, but uh, Bowen, Bowen, Charlie's husband, uh, his grandfather passed away. In fact, Charlie's, uh, Bowen's father called me and told me about that. But let's remember the Buzzard family as we pray tonight, especially. All right. Maybe you have an unspoken burden by upraised hand all across the congregation. Burdens we carry, needs we have. I'm glad God knows our needs. Let's stand together as we pray. Rick, lead us. Let's join together and pray together and, and uh, lift together as he leads us tonight in prayer time. Yes, yes, praise the Lord. Oh, God, praise God. We trust you tonight, Lord. Oh, Jesus, there are needs that we're bringing to you, and you know better than we do, so we bring them to you. Oh, God, oh, God, praise the Lord. We're trusting you tonight, Lord. Be with Andy as he preaches tonight, oh, God. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon him, and may the help of God be his. Oh, Lord, we're trusting you. We're trusting you. Oh, Father, be with every young person there, our kids and others. Some need to make life-changing decisions. Would you touch them and help them, I pray. Oh, God, do that for Jesus' sake. You know about Brother Redmond today. Oh, Jesus. We bring him to you. He faces this, this scan tomorrow. Oh, God, we put him in your hands and ask that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. If it could please you to touch him, be with Byron, and be with his brother, and be with Sister Redford, and all of the family. Oh, God, touch them today. Remember the Ewald family, Lord. Oh, Father. We're trusting you, Lord. We're trusting you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please, please touch them today. Oh, Father, you know about all of the rest of the needs. We're trusting you, Lord Jesus. We're trusting you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, we're trusting you, Lord. Oh, Father, we're trusting you. Touch the Winklers tonight, Lord. Oh, God. We pray you would touch them. We pray that you would for Jesus' sake. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Lord. Every single one. Touch Sister Albertson today, Lord. You know about her needs. We bring her to you, Lord, and ask for your touch, your healing touch. Oh, God, we're asking for your healing touch. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. Oh, Lord, we're believing you to help us. We're believing you to help us, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we're trusting you, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord, we're trusting you, Lord. Amen. Do it, Lord. Oh, God. Do it, Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad God's heard our prayer tonight. Thank you, Rick, for leading us. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. 
Well, we ought to have, well, before we have testimonies, let me, let me make sure I'm getting all of these announcements correctly. Sherilyn sent me uh, something here, and I better check it to make sure I'm getting everything she wanted said. All right, the, the baptismal Sunday. Candidates need to meet at 5 o'clock Sunday evening uh, prior to the baptismal. So if you would meet here in the sanctuary with uh, Brother Andy, and uh, then if you would bring folding chairs, uh, we'll be having this outside, of course, uh, down in front of the fellowship building as like we did last time. So uh, bring your own chairs and uh, your own snacks after the baptismal. We'll kind of have a fellowship time outside, Lord willing. She said she looked and the high is only 81 that day. <laughs> So uh, anyway, plan to be here Sunday night for that. And of course, let's see, it's GBS is going to be with us Sunday night. Is that correct? I think that's correct. And, uh, and then the baptismal after that service. So keep those things in mind. And uh, of course, through the week, be praying. I hope you'll pray every day for, uh, for Andrew as he tries to preach. I have been there and know what that's like. And, uh, and I know he, feel, he feels very strongly his need of the Lord's help. All right, I think that's all of the pressing announcements. All right, we ought to have some testimonies. Who would like to be first? Yes, right here. Praise the Lord. I'm glad he answers prayer too. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good testimonies. Boy, it's a good start, isn't it? All right, who else would like to give God praise tonight? Okay, we've got two standing. Let's do the young one back here first, all right? Praise the Lord. Good, good. Go ahead, Sister Alverson. Yes. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. I can trust Jesus. I really can. Praise the Lord. All right. Someone else want to give God praise? All right. Right back here. Good, good. That's a good testimony. I love Jesus. I love him too, don't you? Praise the Lord. All right. Who's next? Yes, Krista. the Lord. Thank you, Krista. And let's continue to remember her and her mother and family. And uh, those are difficult paths to walk. Some of us have walked them more than once. And, and uh, God is with us. God does give us grace. And I'm grateful that he does. Praise the Lord. All right. Someone else want to give God praise? Yes. Praise the Lord. Good. Good testimony. Praise God. You know, you want to testify? He had his hand up. Good. 
Good, that's a good testimony. <laughs> I think that might be the first time he has, at least the first time I remember it. That's a good testimony. You keep doing that, okay? All right. <laughs> All right, anyone else want to give God praise? We ought to have three or four more adults. Doug? Yes, yes. Amen. Praise God. And it's awful hard to beat that, isn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Doug. Amen. All right? Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> I ought to thank the Lord. We, we were in a, a little uh, grocery store in Yellowstone last week, and my wife said to the girl that was waiting on us, she said, where do y'all live? You work out here, and we're so far to get out of the park. She said, well, almost everybody that works in Yellowstone lives in dorms that are provided by Yellowstone. And uh, I thought of that when somebody sent me a clip of one of those raging rivers and one of those dorms, the river had just eat away at the bank until that whole house, I'm talking about looked like a house as big as this church, I'm not sure, but it, it was a big house. The whole house went into the river and floated down the river. Literally, you watched it float. And I thought, I thank the Lord I was at Yellowstone last week and not this week. <laughs> and same with Rodney and Melissa and their family were there last week and not this week. Because I'll tell you one thing, uh, you get in Yellowstone and you, you've got those little grocery stores and a restaurant or two and you know they've got some lodges where they told me they were all booked up completely for the whole season. But it's a long ways to what I call civilization and uh, I don't want to be in Yellowstone and stuck there where I can't get out to civilization, if you understand. And my wife is even more so that way. So, so I thank the Lord for his hand. I, I couldn't believe some, I don't know if it's any of the roads we traveled on or not, but some of those roads had rivers that had just washed huge portions of the road clear away until the, the road was completely gone. In numerous places, I saw a helicopter uh, picture taken from one of those roads. So I'm very grateful to be home and back at civilization. <laughs> so, all right. Anybody else want to give God praise? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother uh, Beardsley. Is that the way you say it? Bearden. Bearden. All right. I knew some Beardsleys. But Bearden, so glad to have you all. Thank you for your testimony tonight. All right, anybody else want to give, give praise? Yes, Joan?
Amen. 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 You know, you can get to a place in life where you can see a whole, the results of a whole lot of choices God helped you to make. And just thank God for them. Amen. All right. Someone else want to give, give God praise? Brother Witt? Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. And I'm glad that we have his presence. Yes, sir. Not just when we come to church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Brother Witt. Amen. Thank God for his presence. Brother Rodney? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rodney. Very, very good. Amen. God help us. God, and he will. I know he will. <laughs> Amen. Brother Marvin? I'm glad for the love of God that reached out and his love and his mercy for me and gave me a new trajectory. Praise God. Praise God. And we, we go through things as Christians. Mm -hmm. I think it's because God knows that we, we just need that to mm -hmm. help get us strengthened as where we need to be. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to be in his school. I'm glad, I'm glad yes, for sir. his love. I'm glad for his love and mercy. I love to have church with the kids, but I love him. Yes. What he's done for me. Amen. And I want to be faithful to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Yes. <clears throat> Amen. Yes. Yes, 
sir. Amen. Thank you, Marvin. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, God's looking for a man, he said, among them who will make up the hedge and stand in the gap. And I want to be found one that says, Lord, by your grace, I'll fill the, I'll fill the gap if you'll help me. Amen. All right. Anyone else want to give God praise? All right, let's look for a few mo moments at the book of Philippians. If you want to turn there, Philippians, I, uh, you might want to just keep your Bible open. <clears throat> this is a wonderful little book, and I may, I may come back to it a time or two. The church at Philippi was the first Christian church in Europe. Philippians was written about 30 years after the ascension, about 10 years after Paul visited Philippi. Of course, it's written by the Apostle Paul. The book is practical more than theological, but of course, good theology always results in good life, good living, good practical stuff, doesn't it? If your theology is wrong, I'll guarantee you life will become wrong somewhere. But there, there are several reoccurring thoughts in the book. Can you name at least one of them? Joy. Joy. <laughs> we had testimony of that tonight. Why stop with happiness? Why don't you just go on to joy? Well, it's found a lot of times. And he, he talks about making requests with joy. He, he says, I do rejoice and yea, will rejoice in verse 18 of chapter 1. He talks about the joy of faith in verse 25, chapter 2 and verse 16, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Verse 17, I joy and rejoice. Verse 18, you, do ye joy and rejoice with me? Chapter 4 and verse 3, rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say rejoice. Verse 10, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. So it's, it, it just comes again and again and again throughout the little book. Another theme that is reoccurring is the gain of Christ, the gain of serving Jesus. For me to live is Christ, he said in verse 21, and I want to look at that verse a little more in just a moment, but he said, to die is gain. We don't usually look at death that way, do we? But Paul said, to die is gain. <laughs> Need to think about that one, don't you? Verse 23 of chapter 1, I am a straight betwixt two having a desire to depart to be with Christ, which is far better. <laughs> Verse 7 and 8 of chapter 3, he says, the things that were gained to me. It's not hard to find those things that are, that are part of our world or part of our life, the things that were gained to me. Paul said, I counted loss. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus. So the knowledge of Christ was the gain of Paul's life. Well, <clears throat> as I look through the book, it seems as though each chapter, and I'm going to start in chapter 1 tonight, and I don't even know if I'll get all the way through chapter 1. Uh, my wife said it's too hot to keep them long tonight. So uh, I don't know anybody agree with that. <laughs> there, it seems to me there's a, there's a theme in each chapter. And I would call verse 21 of chapter 1 the theme of chapter 1. For me to live is Christ for me to live is Christ and then of course if to live is Christ then that's when to die becomes gain but we might call it Christ the believers life he is the source of life he is the center of life he is the continuation of life he is the controller of life Christ our life. So I want you to keep your Bible open there for a moment and, and let's look at chapter 1 and see some things of what, it, what does it look like if Christ is my life? What does it look like? 
Verse 6, he talks about letting God complete what he has begun. He that has begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. So I think if Christ is my life, the first thing I'm going to do is let him continue what he has begun. What, is God, what has Jesus begun in your life? Have you thought about that? Well, we could talk about that for quite a while. He's, he's begun a lot of things in us, hasn't he? What has he begun in you? Did he, did he back there somewhere when you confessed your sins and asked Jesus, did he clear your record, the record in heaven against you? All of the things, did he clear? That's what Christ has begun in you. Did he sanctify you wholly and give you a clean heart? If so, that's, what, that, that's part of what he has begun in you. If you haven't had that happen in your life, he wants to begin that in you. Building character, making you strong in the Lord and in his power, the power of his might, separating you unto himself. That's what he has begun if you're a Christian. To turn your will in his direction. Do you remember a time when your will was not turned toward God? And God changed that. He turned your will in his direction until you came to the place where you said, not my will, but thine be done. If that's true, that is what he has begun in you. If it's not true, it can be. We talked about joy, a joyful spirit, the joy of the Lord. <laughs> that's what he has begun in us. Christ-like attitude, Christ-like reactions, the mind of Christ. We could just go on and on. Good priorities, patience, long-suffering kindness. We could get right on into good marriage. Is that what he has begun in you, the peace of God? Part of the body of Christ? <laughs> Those are things he has begun. So I think if Christ is our life, the first thing we must do is continue to let him work in our life and do what he has started. Continue to do what he has started. To develop and grow what he has started. <laughs> One of the best illustrations maybe of what I'm trying to say is you that have children understand that Life began, we believe, back there at conception, but life in this world began when the baby was born and there was so much that needed to be added in growth and maturity and learning and, and you watch that process take place and you think, you don't expect a toddler to be able to drive a car because, but if they will continue to let happen what has begun in them, they will become mature adults and one day become self-sufficient and get a job and move out of the house and you say, hallelujah, I don't pay the bills anymore. They're, they're reliable and they're adults and they find families of their own and they grow. What is it? It's the process of something beginning that continues and develops and it's good and it's productive and it's growing and it's beautiful. That's exactly what God wants to do in your life as a Christian. If he is your life, he wants to continue and do what he has, continue what he has begun. The second thing, if Christ is our life, we could find in verse 7. Paul talks about the Philippians being partakers of God's grace. That word partaker means a co-participant. Verse 7. You are partakers of my grace. Paul looked at the Philippian people and said, I find you standing under the same afflictions that I stood under. You face some of the same things I have faced and the same conflicts that were in my life I've seen in you and you shared in my affliction, but you also shared in my grace, the grace that I found. If Christ is in you, you become a partaker, a participant 
in God's grace. What do you need tonight? I guarantee you we all have a need of his grace. <laughs> the third thing I notice is verse 9, abounding in love. If Christ is your life, you have a growing love. Love for God. Love for people, God's people, and love for God's kingdom. A love for sinner people, people that don't know the Lord. A love for holiness, a love for truth, a love for unity, and it could go on and on. If Christ is your life, love will grow and continue to increase and continue to abound. Abound in love, verse 9. Pray that you may abound yet more and more. Your love may abound yet more and more. Verse 9, if Christ is your life, you abound in spiritual knowledge. Abound in love and more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. So let's look at this. If Christ is our life, we can abound in spiritual knowledge, discernment. Now, we understand that there's, there's a lot of, to the negative side of discernment. We as Christians discern what is wrong, don't we? Krista testified about that tonight, maybe talking to people that weren't Christians and said, you know, I'd like just a basic level of honesty here. Well, we Christians know about that, don't we? We can discern what is wrong and what is right, what is holy, and what is unholy. We can discern what is a worldly identity and a godly identity, a world mindset or a God mindset. As Christians, we better learn to discern the wiles of the devil the Scripture talks about because he's as a roaring lion. But I want to tell you it's not all negative. A Christian can discern the nature of God and his character <laughs> you know <laughs> part of Marvin's testimony tonight of, and, and Brother Witt's both testimony tonight about God just stepping in and helping us at home and <laughs> his presence what is that it's a Christian discerning the presence of God <laughs> if Christ is your life God gives you spiritual knowledge and discernment discernment of his will all of us have struggled with that at times in various ways in our life but i want to tell you god wants you to know his will don't stop if you're confused just know that confusion is not from god and keep seeking and keep making christ your life and you will know you will know what god's will is your own duty and his work in the souls of men, his designs in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the spiritual knowledge and discernment. And then he says spiritual judgment or perception. It's part of making Christ our life. He will give you spiritual perception. You know, I'm amazed again and again at how God does this. I want to tell you, you don't need a Ph.D. to have spiritual perception. If you are a Christian and walk a spirit-filled life, God will help you to have spiritual perception. I heard my brother tell <clears throat> one time, I think the preacher was Chuck Swindoll, but I'm not sure. It could have been one of the other radio preachers. But he heard him talk about, in, in a broadcast, <clears throat> about uh, some little nugget of truth that he had learned that week in his study. And, and he was pretty happy about it and pretty impressed with himself, he said. <laughs> and he preached it that Sunday and, and felt pretty good that he had imparted his wisdom and judgment and discernment and perception on his congregation. But he said, a little saintly lady came up to me after the service, after the sermon, and he said she wasn't, she wasn't bragging or anything. She just said, oh, brother, God revealed to the me, me to, that to me several months ago. <laughs> and he said, I, I came right back down to earth and realized God didn't me, need me. 
<laughs> he could do it without me. <laughs> Make Christ your life. You want to know how to live? He'll help you know how to live. You want to know what you need to start or stop or begin or quit? I can tell you, you make Christ your life and he'll give you discernment to know how you ought to live. Hallelujah. Approve, he says. Discern the things that are excellent, the things that are of more value. You know, again and again, I see Christians sacrifice what is good for what is better. You know why people do that? It's because God... Christ has become their life and God helps them to make those kind of choices. Approve things that are to the end that you prove the things that differ. Well, I'm going to keep you too long if I do all that. I'm going to have to do this first chapter in more than one. Wow, I've got three or four more. No, I better quit. <laughs> if Christ is your life, let me give you one more. Verse 10, he says, you will be sincere. <clears throat> and it suggests the idea of being judged by sunlight and tested as genuine. <laughs> if Christ is your life, you may be examined in the strongest light without the possibility of flaw or imperfection that displeases God. Purified and refined, the indwelling spirit, even the light of God himself shining in your heart until he will help you to live sincerely or judged by sunlight. And that leads to without offense. And that idea in verse 10 means suggests not led to sin until the day of Christ. Not offensive to God. Well, I'm going to stop right there, but I, I want Christ to be my life, don't you? I mean, every day and the decision-making, <laughs> the attitudes of my life and the words of my mouth and the relationships that I have, Christ, our life. Look on through that chapter. There's some more. We may come back to it. But when Christ is our life, it makes life worthwhile. All right, let's stand together.